Let me ask, where will you be in five or ten years? What would you be doing? Where would you be? Where do you want to be in five or ten years? Be careful before you answer. Be careful. Three of you are raising your hand. Are you sure you really want to answer? Okay? The three of you are sure. Okay, just two of you now. I'll embarrass you with the question I'm about to ask. And if you don't get the answer right, you leave this training right away. And I'm serious about that. Okay, you know what I just did? I've just presented to you what life would always do. Life would try to scare you. But only the bold, only those who are able to keep their hand up, even when they're being threatened. I saw that she was going to put her hand down. Like, hey, hey, let's see this man go talk now. <laughs> I can not go embarrass myself. And then she put it up. And I love the boldness that I see. Now, that is the attitude I want all of you to have. One of the questions that I asked anybody I interviewed is, tell me how you have failed before and what you did about it. Because I think failure might be an opportunity. My name is Benga Sheson. I'm a social entrepreneur. I am executive director of Paradigm Initiative Nigeria, and our work is focused on young people. We're going straight. Follow the tanker. Left, left, keep left. Keep right, keep going, keep left. We're using the next turn, Kata Bridge, so you might want to stay right. My Nigeria. There are two sides to it. One is potential. But the other side of Nigeria that makes me laugh is the fact that for many years, we basically said, oh, the government should, the government should, private sector should, civil society should. But right now, nobody is saying anything. People are building stuff on their own. When I was much younger, I was denied access to a computer, and I went out of my way to learn how to use it. And so that's basically part of what I do now, training young people, connecting them with opportunities through technologies. Now you're getting into Ajegunle, and this is where the population multiplies. It's called small Nigeria, actually, because you will find people from almost every tribe, actually every tribe. seen how ICTs can change lives. In my third year in secondary school, which is why I got all this you know, idea and passion about technology from, I was told by a teacher I could never understand how to use computers. Because you know, I was really tiny and he was a big man. He said, no, you can't understand how to use them. Ah, uh, they're not people like you. I cried on that day. How many of you know that in secondary school, you dare not have tears in your eyes when you get into a class? Because the girls will look at you and say, mommy's boy. So I cried, I had to cry between the principal's office and my class. And you know when you have to cry inside? I remember I've cried inside before. Somebody said something that pained you. It got to the bone and to the marrow and to every fiber of you, and you could cry, but you didn't want to know, so you cried inside. And I made up. I'm the kind of guy you don't tell not to do something. I will do it. If you tell me it's impossible, I take it as a challenge. Like you're saying, oh, Benga, come do this. I remember when we told people we were going to Ajegun, we were told, is it safe? Are you sure? We've been there now, going to eight years, and we haven't had one incident. And that's because what we offer is very simple. We're saying, yes, this community doesn't exactly inspire hope, but if you go through this seven-week process, you will become a role model for everyone else in the community. lessons that I learned in my short years of going from the young man who was told he would never understand how to use computers 
to becoming one who travels the world to discuss the same thing called computers, the things I've learned were the things we put together to start the curriculum here. We're not a training center. If you thought you came to a training center, please go back home. We're a life transforming center. What I basically want to communicate to them is one thing. These seven weeks will change your life if you allow them to. My name is Chigimicha Uzochi Priska. My dream is to become a medical doctor. Last year, I wanted to write an exam. The exam is basically on computer. So the reason why I came to PIN was just to learn on computer so I wouldn't fail my exam. Yeah, so did open a new word to me because I was thinking people who know computer are very, very intelligent. I even had this thinking that it is only male that knows how to operate computer. But when I came to PIN, wow, I was really, really surprised that even a female can operate computer and it was very wonderful for me. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. In the condom. Okay. Should I package it for you in the nylon? Oh, okay. Back then, when my parents had money, the schools we went to were okay, but since the clash between my parents aroused, I had to go to a government school whereby they were not able to teach us very, very well. So I had to go to other lessons. Even the lessons I went to, they were not able to teach me the way I wanted it. So I just had to manage. The idea of this program is to train you and help you over the next few years, right? But what do you see yourself doing over the next two to three years? I like to be a model. To be a model? Okay, well, have you, do you know anybody who has gone through this training before? So how did you hear about this? I heard about it from my friend. She told me it's only really computer or something like that. Mm -hmm. The impression I'm getting is that somebody told me all that stuff. I will apply all that stuff. Instead of sitting at home, doing nothing, it's better to learn something. You should never apply for something you don't know so much about. I mean, I understand, you know, you think it's an opportunity and you just want to apply for it, but you should, you should get some more information. We have all sorts of people from disinterested to this is the only opportunity I will get in my life to, I don't know. Area is actually the same one. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So I mean, so the, the fundamental thing is there's an opportunity there. Let's yeah, go there. So let's go there. So yeah. it's no surprise that you get all manner of different kinds of yeah, people. Yeah. The kind of people we're looking for are from very, very humble backgrounds uh, who would otherwise not be able to afford this kind of training. That's one of the things that if you are selected, you will learn from this program how to make money from your skills. Typical person we're looking for is someone who is already on the path to unemployment and to the bottom of the pyramid, uh, but we can tell that they're just looking for one opportunity you know, to, to make themselves better. Because once you help one person, you've helped their family, literally. My name is Michael. So a friend of mine told me about PIN when the PIN was recruiting new persons. And he brought the form to me. I was like, man, what's this? I don't usually believe such a thing like that. You know, it sounds so simple that there's a place that can just um, impact into you without you paying a dime. I was like, wow, is this um, happening in this place? So I said, okay, let me give it a try. I had to come and I saw it, I saw it for myself. I, it was um, really wonderful. Yeah, there's my home, this is where I live. There's my mom. Uh, this is where we've been living for the past um, 10 years, since 2004. This year we'll make it 11 years. And um, my mom and my elder sister, 
They sleep on the bed here. My elder brother stays on this place, on this chair, yeah. And I myself, I sleep here. That's where I sleep. So that's my home. That's it. Forget about all your problems. Forget about all your pains. Forget about all your problems today. So the struggles has been something else. Though some people that knows me today, they don't really know what I've passed through. There was even one of the day among those past years that my mom, she nearly even wanted to drown inside the ocean. But um, I remember my little self then, very small. So I had to run to her and grip her, tell her, Mom, it's me, Michael. Uh, because I know what she wanted to do. She wanted to get herself killed. Just mine, just mine. There are tons of computer training institutes in Nigeria, but we're different in the sense that our training is not focused, it's not even focused on ICTs. So what we say is that our work is ICTs plus youth equals socioeconomic opportunities. That's why we call it the LIFE program. It's focused on life skills because these are kids who have been beaten by life. So we basically make them understand you can actually be something. We have ICT, which is also one of the four different things we do. The other is financial readiness. And the last part of it is entrepreneurship. It's basic. We call it shine your eye, which is something, you know, an average Nigerian will tell you they understand what it means, shine your eye. It basically means open your eyes because there are opportunities. The reason you can't see them is because you're not opening your eyes wide enough just yet. See many people on the street. Their lives need to be changed. If I can come out from that past I was, if pain could transform my thinking, my mindset, my way of reasoning, I believe those people out there, they can also. It's possible. Lagos is anything between 15 and 18 million. Most of the people you would find are young people who just left school and are trying to eke out a living for themselves. Every day that you're here, money is spent. There's a reason why there's always light. We're in Nigeria. Abi, is there always light when you go back home? <laughs> I know some of you just come here to charge your phone. <laughs> Do us a favor. Do not waste the resources expended on you. My point is this, life will present opportunities and people will take it in different ways. One opportunity you have right now is the seven week training opportunity. I look forward to that one young man or that one young woman who will become the face of this set. Nigeria needs more Benga kind of people because they need to inspire children. They need to bring a creative, constructive thinking in children's mind so that they can see afar, they can see the future, they can forecast, they can have a, a mental picture of the future. Does anybody have this on his or her screen? No. No? What about you? No? Hello, everybody. On your screen, you click, you double click on office, then you see open office. Every Wednesday, I go to Yaba to teach female students. You go to this side here, you see things like this. So I teach them MS Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Where the passion came from was just because I wanted to impact students while I was taught from PIN. Because PIN says when you've got our information for a particular place and it's being stored in you and you don't take it out, it's definitely worth less in you. But if it's been brought out and people see, okay, that this is very, very good and they are being impacted, also, it adds value to you. What we tell everyone when they come for the training, you don't only learn, you also need to spread what you've learned. And it's interesting to see how people like Michael and Priska will take on that instruction 
and then turn it into something that they actually live out. And so when I asked them, I wasn't surprised, by the way, to hear that one of the reasons they're doing that is because they're appreciative. In, in Nigeria. Are you going to project more than that? Yes. Uh, let me hear the projection. Pin, pin, Nigeria. Okay, fine. Let me hear you, please. Me? All of us. Both, uh, yeah, the three of you. Pin, pin, Nigeria. The best among the rest. Paradigm shaped Nigeria. Paradigm shaped Nigeria. Pin, pin, Nigeria. I don't like traffic. So when I'm in the car, what I do then is to catch up on social media conversation that has happened. Because I believe that, you know, in this time and age, it's the least opportunity that I have to contribute to national or global conversation. Okay, it's that time of the week again, and it's that time of the day. It's time for Be All You Can Be right here on the Beat 99.9 FM, and our special guest, Benga Chesson, CEO of PIN. We've seen the social media, the internet, the fact that practically every Nigerian has access to an internet-enabled phone. We've seen the level of involvement, mm. like, step up completely. So I said to people that all these, you know, things we're talking about social media and technology started sometime around 2009. By 2013, we began to see citizens use the same platform to save themselves. So somebody has cancer, you raise funds for you know, the, the person online. So we had the Save This Person, Save That Person campaign. By 2014, we saw one of the most important ones was Bring Back Our Girls, where one tweet from an event was retreated by someone else and then went all over the world and became a movement. And going into 2015, that is the same momentum of social media involvement we're beginning to see. Okay, so fantastic. You know what? This conversation doesn't end here. We know that you have a lot to say, so thank you very much. This is Be All You Can Be. Let's take it offline. No, I didn't hear that. One of the interesting things about radio in Nigeria is that you have more radio than you have internet. And so when I get a chance to discuss issues on radio, especially when it has to do with technology, I'm excited because then I know I can reach out to more people, uh, those who are online and those who are offline. <laughs> what are you doing again? Is that Twitter? We're all unemployed, otherwise we won't be here now. <laughs> but no, but the point is, when all home, I sat down with the closer, and then I went to So you we all want to attend that. Okay. Nice to meet you. We're basically having a networking event for the tech community in Nigeria, hosted by EasyWash. Uh, and so you have a few people around who are, you know, running their own tech businesses or who work in some of the tech businesses around Yaba. No, 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 um, so it was easy for me to say, you know, ICT for development consultant or ICT expert, but I also wanted to capture the spirit of the other side of me, the active citizen. What are we demanding? Bring back our girls now. now. What is our singularity of purpose? Bring back our girls now and alive. What do we want? Is all the rescue operation. Where will we stop? Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Benga Chesson, and I'm one of those who have done more online uh, advocacy for this than offline. It, it's sad that we're still here. So as I speak to you today, uh, my wife and I, anytime within the next two weeks, we're expecting our first baby. And that instinct of a father is beginning to come down. I can imagine what it will feel like for a father. Solidarity forever. In terms of volunteering, initially what I thought was anything that was related to technology, youth, and Nigeria. And it's the same reason why I got involved with the girls that were kidnapped. That was about young people, it was about Nigeria, and the only thing I knew, I knew to do at the time was to use technology. <coughs> Uh, 
So today, we'll set up a website. So what I will do is just uh, recap on how to add your post. What worries me is we've reached way less than a million in a country where we need to reach 34 million. Now, that doesn't help me sleep at night. When you know the, the numbers for poverty levels in Nigeria, and literally our work is to make sure that every young person that we train is able to rise not just above the poverty line, but is able to take their entire family above the poverty line, then at times we ask ourselves, who asked us to do this? Uh, for me and my mother, I hope to go deeper into studying more about what I do, what I love doing. Like, um, music is something that, even though I get angry, I can go to music and play my guitar, and I come back to myself. My hope in life is that by God's grace, as God blesses me, I'm going to take her out of the country, for her to go and rest and enjoy herself, because she's, she's done a lot and she's passed through a lot of and she needs to rest. She needs to enjoy life for it, at least before she goes back to God. So next week, you try as much as possible and do it very well by yourself. Being that sincere really impressed me because he said one striking statement. He said when he was in school, that the teacher always called him basket head, coconut head, that he never knew anything. And then I was like, wow. Mr. Being that sincere here, the way he's talking, you can never believe that he has a past. He said the, the, the only thing that struck him was because the teacher said he's a coconut that he basketed. And he said he can never be like this when he grows up. He must go higher than this. That was what really gave me an edge. I think the first thing that hit me was, do I want to raise a child in Nigeria? There were things that I didn't have access to myself because I was raised here. But I think it makes me double my effort because I want to raise my child in a country that works. And I also don't want my child asking me someday, oh, daddy, what did you do <laughs> to make Nigeria better? And I will say nothing. Nah. I've got to say what I did. <laughs> Yesterday at 11.30 a.m., he arrived. Oh, by the way, he's got his own Twitter handle. Uh, he tweeted, hello, hello world, <laughs> when he was born. I'm tweeting on his behalf for now, so. Thanks for clarifying that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's a, he's a great guy. He's tough like his daddy. Yeah. <laughs> the first BB was, he's tough like daddy, so he's tough like his daddy. Wow. His daddy really tough. <laughs> Yes, we have a different perspective of life. Yes, we have a different visions we could see. We all need some birthday, need another, need education to better our nation. We need some birthday. My name is Benga Shesson, and this is my Nigeria. When I think of my Nigeria, I think of potential and I think of real life action. When I think of potential, I think of what could be, but is not. But when I think of real-life action, I think of young people who literally take their future into their own hands and build something that they can be proud of and others can also be proud of. And that's the story of my Nigeria.